welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today's video is yet another thrift flip for you guys. Uh, it's a little bit different though in the number of projects that I actually got done for today, including nine rolling pins and three small cutting boards uh, and another little project that you'll see in the video. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy uh, all of my little makeovers and I hope you enjoy the video and without further ado, let's get to today's projects. Now, as I said in the intro, today's video is about getting some odds and ends things out of my uh, stash as well as cleaning up some odds and ends uh, decoupage papers and pieces of transfers that I've had laying around uh, in drawers and just kind of all over the place. And so what I did here, I had three rolling pins in my kitchen and I knew I had other ones out in my little storage area. So I went and gathered them and I ended up having nine rolling pins. <laughs> so I went through my drawer of decoupage paper and found some pieces that would work on these guys. And so I picked out six rolling pins to use the decoupage paper on. And then I painted their uh, handles in coordinating colors to go with the papers that they would be going on them. So the first three I am using DIY's aviary and I am just giving each of the handles two even coats of aviary and then on the second set of three I am using a little black dress by DIY and again just two good coats of the little black dress. Once they're completely painted and the paint is dry, I needed to seal them. So I grabbed Big Top and just went over all of the handles with one good coat of Big Top. Once I had one coat of uh, the big top on all of the handles, I set them aside to dry completely before I moved on to the next step. So next, since I am going to be using decoupage paper on these, I wanted to have a nice clean white background so that all of my images on my papers would stand out really nicely. So I am using DIY's White Swan and I am just giving each one of these rolling pins one good coat of White Swan. Just being careful, I didn't want to go over the edges to the handles. I wanted to leave uh, that little bit of the, the original color showing at the end of each of the rolling pins. Now, in all honesty, this is the first time I've ever decoupaged a rolling pin, and I wasn't really sure exactly how to measure my paper. So I just wrapped it around one of the rolling pins and then used a pencil to kind of draw the line where they met each other and then cut it out with my paper cutter. Once I had my piece of paper cut to the right length to wrap around the rolling pin, I laid a little strip of DIY's liquid patina onto the rolling pin and then carefully placed my decoupage paper on that and then went over it with a second coat of the liquid patina to help smooth out wrinkles. Then I just began working my way around the rolling pin, just adding a little bit more liquid patina in little strips and then laying the decoupage paper down and using my brush to remove as many of the wrinkles as I could while adding that top layer of the liquid patina. Now I'm not sure exactly what the name of this paper is. I know I bought it from Jamie Ray Vintage quite some time ago and I have had these scraps sitting in my drawer for ages now and I thought these rolling pins would be a perfect way uh, to use up some of this older paper. I also wanted to mention that I did spritz my paper with just a little bit of water with my Mr. Bottle before I actually put it on the rolling pin. That helps alleviate any wrinkles and fold marks in the paper before you even get started, uh, which is helpful. Also, I cut the paper long enough that there was a little bit of overhang at each end of the rolling pin. This is so that I can sand off the edges of the paper when these are dry, rather than trying to cut them to the exact length that I needed. And as it happened, I had just enough of this paper to cover three of these rolling pins, which is why three of them all have matching coordinating green handles. 
The other thing that I discovered while doing this is that it is better to have a little bit of an overlap at the end of your paper rather than cutting it so short that you have any of that white showing through. Overlap is much better than having a white strip on your rolling pin when you're finished. Now for this little rolling pin, I have a scrap of an older redesign with Prima paper. This is a rice paper called Floral and Dream. And for whatever reason, the piece that I had went around this rolling pin perfectly. I don't know how that happened, uh, but it was the exact size that I needed to uh, wrap around this particular smaller rolling pin. So I just used the liquid patina, same as the others, and left a little bit of an overhang at each end. This piece was almost perfect for this rolling pin. And then finally, for the last two rolling pins, I had this scrap piece of a Roy Cycle decoupage paper. This one I believe is called Sepia Blossoms or Sepia Blooms. It's a very pretty paper. And I had just enough left for these last two rolling pins that I had painted with black handles. So again, same procedure. I just cut out the piece of paper long enough to barely overlap around the rolling pin, uh, decoupage that down with liquid patina, used a top coat of liquid patina and my brush to help alleviate any wrinkles and left just a little bit of an overhang at each of the ends. Once all of my decoupage rolling pins were completely dry, I grabbed a piece of 120 grit sandpaper and very carefully in a downward sweeping kind of motion, uh, sanded off the excess paper from the ends of the rolling pins. Being careful to try not to go too far because I really didn't want to accidentally sand any of the paint off of the handles. As a final step, I took the sandpaper and went around the edges of the rolling pins to just remove any of the white paint that might be sticking out from underneath the decoupage paper. Once I had finished with the first six rolling pins, it was time to move on to the last three. And for two of them, I knew I wanted to use transfers. And the transfer sets that I had picked would both coordinate with a uh, darker brown paint. So I grabbed DIY's layered chocolate for the handles on these. And again, just gave each one of the handles two coats of layered chocolate paint, uh, letting it dry completely in between. And once they were dry again, giving them a coat of DIY's big top to seal the paint. Once the handles were completely dry, it was time to paint the body of these guys. And for that, I'm using DIY's crinoline. I love this color. It's such a beautiful neutral. And I am giving each one of these rolling pins two coats of crinoline, letting it dry completely between the coats. Now for the first rolling pin, I'm using up some spare pieces that I had of a transfer set by Redesign with Prima. I believe it's called Papillon Collection. Forgive me if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Uh, I know that Papillon is French for butterfly. And so I used the word inspire in the middle and then just added two butterflies, one to each end of this rolling pin. Uh, and then this one is ready to be sealed and it'll be finished. And then this is a piece out of a transfer set also by Redesign with Prima called Forest that I had a few extra pieces kind of laying around. Uh, and once I had those transfers down, like I said, you just need to seal them. So I am using DIY's Big Top for that and just going over each of these guys with one good coat of Big Top. Now for my ninth and final rolling pin, this one I really loved the look of just naturally. I liked the honey color 
Also, it was kind of, it felt kind of greasy. It obviously had been used quite a bit in its life and I just decided to go ahead and leave it natural and just paint the handles. So I'm using two coats of DIY's Apothecary followed by a coat of Big Top to seal and then this one is done as well. Project two is a pretty simple makeover. I have had this fork and spoon set in my stash for I don't even know how long. My daughter actually bought these for me ages ago and uh, it was because I had sold a couple sets of forks and spoons that I had painted and was having a hard time finding them at the thrift store and said something to her and so when she saw these she grabbed them for me. So <laughs> then of course I just kind of threw them in my stash and forgot they were even there. So today is the day that they are finally getting finished and out on the floor. Uh, so I am using DIY's Apothecary and just giving these each two coats of Apothecary paint, uh, letting them dry and then going in with my damp shop towel and doing some pretty heavy distressing on these. I really wanted some of that dark brown to kind of shine through, make these look like they've been sitting around for quite some time and were a little bit aged. Uh, so once I was finished with that, I moved on to sealing the paint. And for that, I just used a coat of DIY's Big Top. And then these guys were finally finished. Project three are these three little cutting boards that again have been in my stash for a long time and I thought these would be a perfect opportunity to use up some of the little bits and pieces of transfer sets that I had laying around. Uh, I don't know about you guys but I always seem to have several little itty bitty pieces of these transfer sets that I just try and keep organized and they always end up all over the place and so I really really, really wanted to use those up rather than have them get ruined or end up throwing them away. So I started by painting my cutting boards. I used Apothecary on one and gave it two coats front and back faded burlap on one, two coats front and back. And on the third, I used crinoline again, two coats front and back. Let those dry completely and then it was time to decorate. For this apothecary uh, cutting board, I am using up uh, bits and pieces of an older transfer set by Redesign with Prima called Botanical Paradise. Now, I don't even remember all the things I have put this transfer set on, uh, but these are just the pieces that I had kind of left over that kept getting scattered around. Um, my cat knocked them down once and all over the floor. Luckily, I was able to salvage them, and I just really decided it's time to use use them up and not have to worry about them anymore. So I just kind of took a moment and figured out my placement and then just one by one started laying my transfers down.
Once I was happy with my transfers, I moved on to some stamps. Now, these stamp sets I bought off Amazon, again, ages and ages ago. I have a lowercase set and an uppercase set. And so I decided to make the words home, sweet home, using the lowercase for the home and then the uppercase for the sweet. Once I had them placed where I wanted them, I picked them up with a piece of backer sheet, then inked them up with some stays on black ink, and then carefully laid them back down where I wanted them, holding them with one hand and just pressing those stamps with the other, not too hard, but just enough to get a decent impression. Then I stamped home again underneath where sweet was going to be. And then as a final step, I stamped the last E and T really quickly onto the board. Then it was time to seal my board. And for that, I'm just using a spray sealer by Rust-Oleum. It's just a clear matte spray. Then it was onto the crinoline board. And for this one, I decided to use a stencil as a background. And this stencil is called Script. It's by Redesign with Prima. I am stenciling that with a Golden Ticket Liquid Patina by DIY using a makeup sponge. Then it was on to decorating the piece. And for this one, I'm using the rest of a transfer set I have called Wild Amorous. This one is by Redesign with Prima as well. Tons of beautiful purple and pink, very feminine florals in this transfer set. And this is one I actually do have available on my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. Sometimes I forget to mention that it's always good practice to burnish your transfer in by using a piece of vellum and just rubbing them really well before you seal. And again, for this one, I am using the uh, same clear matte spray from Rust-Oleum. For my third and final little cutting board, I am using pieces and parts of the uh, transfer set by Redesign with Prima called Forest. And so I'm just adding some greenery and some little mushrooms and a few little florals. And then the words that I'm using came from that Papillon collection uh, transfer set. So I just lay each transfer down one by one, rubbing it down with a transfer sick, removing that piece of vellum as I go, and lastly adding on the words. And then I decided to embellish it just a little bit further by adding a little key at the top and a little purple flower that I had. Then it's just a matter of spray sealing this one as well, and I am finally finished with my cutting boards. projects for today's video. I hope you liked them and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I so appreciate that. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything. And don't forget to drop me a comment below and let me know which of the projects your favorite was today. I think for me, I had two. I really liked the crinoline and the apothecary little cutting boards. Those were probably my two favorites. 
Uh, for Tuesday's video, I'm really not sure exactly what it's going to look like at this point. Uh, my husband is coming on Saturday, which is tomorrow, uh, to build me a little divider wall here in the cottage. Uh, so it's going to be kind of a mess of a day. I doubt I'm going to get much finished here. Uh, and Sunday, we're actually going on our very first junk run of 2024. So it could be a thrift haul. It could be some... Um, footage of building the wall. I am really hoping this afternoon to get to the little coffee table project that's waiting for me. So it could be some of that too. I'm really not sure. But anyway, cut it. I hope you will join me back here on Tuesday for the video. Should be fun no matter what. And just a reminder too, uh, the paint and products you saw me use can be purchased through me on my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. I carry not only the DIY products, but Sweet Pick and Smoke paint, redesign with Prima, as well as Recycled Treasures decoupage paper. So check those out. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. Uh, thank you so much for all the beautiful comments on my last video, you guys. I know not every transformation I do is going to be quite that dramatic, uh, but I really, really appreciate all the beautiful words you guys had to say. Uh, I am very happy with how that little dresser came out. If you didn't catch the video, please go back and, and check that out. Anyway, have a great weekend, you guys, and I will see you back here on Tuesday. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Bye.